everyone, it's Carmen, and welcome to another Crochet With Me. This episode, I'm going to be talking about some TV shows that I've been watching, and um, I will show you also what I've been working on. So let me go grab them, and I'll be back. So these have been what I've been working on. They are boxes, um, a little bit bigger than this, but they basically cover this box that I got last Christmas, and it's technically the same thing I was working on um, in the episode I did with Joanna, um, which will be linked, boop, maybe. I also have a black and lavender one, and this is the original color scheme. So it's like mint and brown. So, um, I have a bunch of these made. Um, I have two of these black ones made, and including this one, I will have made three. But, I made one that was way too big, and originally I had was like, I'll just keep it, and I'll use it as a separate basket. But actually, I ran out of this teal color. So, this episode, I'm going to be frogging. Um, so if you don't know what frogging is, basically, um, I don't know how it got its name. You could probably tell me. If you're a crochet person, you could probably tell me. But what I heard was, um, so frogging is uncrocheting all your stuff. You pull the thread and it just, you know, gets rid of your crochet. So it's like, rip it? rip it so they call it frogging it because it's like ribbit 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 tell me if that's wrong um i have no idea why it's called being frogged um but yeah so i'm just frogging this this episode um so this used to be the bottom of this which was a giant which was a giant um one of these so let me show you the scale like you can already tell this actually fits over this too snugly see how it's like super big so it doesn't even fit nicely over a thing so what I've been I've been using this as like a yarn holder but this episode well right before I was recording this I was like I'm just gonna get rid of it because I need the teal yarn, mint yarn. So I decided to frog it, and I decided to record myself frogging it. So this was the bottom. See how much yarn that is? Usually what I do is make it into a ball, so I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. a little bit too big. So, maybe that big. And then I just roll this up again. Um, I think I did a video, I did a video where I made yarn balls. Um, so it's basically the same thing. I start off with the bow. I put the bow between to my fingers and and then I go around with the yarn really loosely real loose so that um, it's a loose ball you don't want the yarn too compact um, and then you go diagonally one way see how I'm going diagonally now instead of straight and then I go diagonally the other way I usually count to ten but I'm not counting this time. And then I switch it over. So I was going diagonally this way, and now I'll go diagonally this way. Let's see. And then I frog at the same time. Let's see? And then I go switch it. Uh. Switch it. Yeah. So I'm always going diagonally this way. Um, and then I just switch my hand to match the opposite movement, I guess. Um, let me know how you guys frog. Maybe you don't frog. Maybe you don't believe in frogging. But I am too lazy 
to buy more yarn. And I just want to finish this project because I've been on a roll. So I was like, I don't want to go and buy more yarn. Plus, I don't even know if they make this yarn anymore. And I think it was Red Heart, but you know, I don't remember. So screw it. Use this yarn that I haven't, you know, that is really of no use to me. Anyway, so while I'm doing that, I'll talk about... Um, what I've been watching recently. So literally today, I just finished um, Manhunt for the Unabomber. Um, I think it's called Manhunt colon Unabomber, but um, it's basically this really intense story about uh, the hunt for the Unabomber, and it's all, um, it's not a documentary, it's all acting, but it's like, uh, oh god, I forgot his name already. Um, the guy who was an avatar, and then, um, uh, there's, like, I'm usually really great at actor names, but I'm just really failing right now, so it's, like, the guy who was an avatar, and then it's Vision, um, who is, oh god. Nope, lost it. It's Vision from Marvel, um... You know, I had it for a split second. I knew his name at the beginning. Um, yeah, but it's a bunch of great actors. And it's like Chris Noth, who I'm not a huge fan of. But um, I will say he was pretty great in this. And it's like... Uh, I don't know. Paul Bettany. Paul Bettany. That's Vision. That he plays the Unabomber, Ted Kaczynski. And, um, it's really the story of, um, this one FBI agent, and he becomes a profiler. And he's a really good profiler, but no one really takes him seriously, I guess. I guess, um, because either, you know, it's really like a, really the story... I, th I think the moral, I don't know if there's a moral to that story, but if there is, it's basically don't do what people tell you, do what you believe in, because, um, so the main character, his name is, F um, James Fitzgerald, I think, Fitzwilliams, maybe, um, they call him Fitz, so, um, I was giving, like, I was giving, like, a Marvel flashback if you guys watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but I'm also watching that. So, um, oh, I guess I should just say spoilers for everything that I'm talking about, which I'll put in the description box. Um, but, so the story is about this guy, Fitzwilliams, James Fitzwilliams, and he becomes a profiler, and he has, like, a wife and two kids, and he just became an FBI agent, and he's like, or I mean, he didn't just become an FBI agent, but he just became, like, a profiler. And then they ask him to go help hunt for the Unabomber, who has been... Um, you know, killing people for, or I mean, he has been around for 17 years. They've been on a manhunt for 17 years for this guy, and they haven't got him yet. And, um, they need a profiler to profile his letters or his bombs or whatever. So he goes in bright eyed and bushy tailed, and they're like, just do what we tell you. Um, here's what we have, which is the profile, and you just need to BS, um, couple pages so that we can give it to our boss who, you know, wants to see a profile. And he's like, what if I do actual work on, you know, what I think the profile is? And they're like, no, every profile who comes in here just tells us we need to start all over again. And you, we're not doing that because I don't know, bureaucracy. So he's like fed up with the system and he does a, his own profile anyway, and he feels like he's just working against the current the whole time, but in reality, because you know, like, I don't know if you're familiar with the Unabomber case, I don't know if, like, um, you know, I wasn't around when he was bombing, and I only heard about him after he was caught, because, um, I was born in 1988, um, <laughs> But, you know, I wasn't, like, a true crime fan when I was seven, when he was caught. Or, you know, yeah, when he was caught. And then I was only nine when he was convicted. So it's not like I was super into that stuff. Um, 
but yeah, he, it was really interesting, and it's really, um, just a jumble of anxiety, because you know he's right, you know, like, Fitzwilliams, like, the original, apparently, the original profile was, uh, the Unabomber was dumb, he was in his, um, 30s and 40s, he was, like, a pissed off airline mechanic, that's why he kept bombing airlines, and you know, if you know anything about the Unabomber case, you know that's incorrect, you know he was super smart, um, he was 53 when he was caught, not, you know, 35, and, um, you know he's, like, uh, he has, like, a manifesto, and, you know, they don't know that going in. Look, I'm almost done frogging this bottom part. So they don't know that going in. So, you know, he, you know that he's right and you know, like, he, they eventually get caught, but it's like the drama of getting there. And then he kind of, you know, starts this whole forensic linguistics um, area where he says, you know, uh, if you're from Philadelphia, you say water like water. And it's spelled in the show W W U D D E R, so water. And um, it's like that's how you would pronounce water if you were from Philadelphia, Philly. And you know, um, obviously, we know now dialects from different areas say things differently. But back then, it wasn't like a foreign. It wasn't like a foreign concept, but it wasn't like. This is hard linguistic evidence. So, um, it was really amazing how they came to get there, and... But anyway, look, that's one ball. So, I'm just dropping it in there. This, I had frogged before I started recording, but it was part of this, like, see that seam that goes along the whole edge? That was what that was. So, I'm just gonna, you know, roll that up. Basically, what happened was Ted Kaczynski's brother, David Kaczynski, he and his wife, like, they they read the manifesto and they are like, this sounds a lot like David. I mean, sorry. This sounds a lot like Ted. And so they sent the letter in. Um, they sent the letter in and it was, it was just so interesting, you know, like the family dynamics and, like, the, basically the politics that goes into, you know, police catching or bad guy catching and policing. And it's just, I don't know, it was a really good episode and I don't know how much of it was dramatized and I don't know how much of it was real, but it was a really good series, you know, you guys. Anyway, the other thing I've been watching, um, that I haven't finished has been Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, uh, you guys, I have a love-hate relationship with this show, so I find the main character, Daisy, or, you know, she's one of the main characters, I find her very Mary Sue-ish, so if you don't know what Mary Sue is, I, it's basically, I was telling this to my boyfriend who had also never heard of the term, but it's like, if I were to write a story, and it would be about a 20-something Asian female born in the United States, and, you know, she's per, you know, she's, like, awkward, but also everything great happens to her. It's basically, like, the perfect woman who doesn't think she's perfect? I don't know. Why don't you Google Mary Sue? But it's basically, like, an unrealistic person, and, uh, everything just seems to somehow happen to her, and it's just, like, I don't get it, you know? So, uh, it was, like, the first season of S.H.I.E.L.D., um, they find her because she's, like, hacking into their database, and then she also happens to be an inhuman, and she just happens to become a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, and then she just happens to be on the run, and then people look up to her, and then she's, like, a vigilante, and then she just happens to run into Ghost Rider, like, all these things just happen to her. I don't know, but I do love the show, so I don't know what that says about me. Maybe I just love, I don't, I don't know, you guys. I just, 
I just really geek out about comics and stuff. Like, um, Taylor and I, my boyfriend Taylor and I, have been watching The Defenders, and we're not done yet, so don't spoil me. But we're watching The Defenders, and, um... I just get so excited when they all finally meet each other, and it's like, I just love team-ups, you know? So, I just like, I don't know, maybe I'm just like a weirdo. Anyway, so that's what I've been watching. And my favorite part about the series so far, um, so I, the, I'm talking specifically about season four. So season four was last season, in case you don't know. Um, I only watch things on Netflix and Amazon, so I'm not, like, caught up. But, um, my favorite part about season four so far has been, uh, basically it's been Ghost Rider. Uh, because that was freaking awesome. I'm not a huge fan of Ghost Rider, like, the original... I haven't seen the Nick Cage version, frankly, and I'm not a huge fan of him in the show, but he's basically like a vengeance uh, killer. So he goes after, you know, people who have killed other people, and he kills them. Um, pausing in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So I'm going after these seams now, and then I will be frogging each one of these panels. Maybe not on camera. But, uh, going back to S.H.I.E.L.D., I like, I, I don't know, I just like team-ups and seeing, like, uh, Daisy with, uh, uh, Ghost Rider, it really, really made me excited, and even though I'm not a huge fan of either one of them, it was like, yes, yes, more, and, um, I don't know, and then, um, uh, if you saw season, what, Three, I think. Uh, it had Mockingbird, and I had no idea who Mockingbird was before that, but it made me really like Mockingbird, you guys. So, I mean, that's one thing, you know, you... I like knowing... I guess I like team-ups because then you get heroes from different aspects of life, and then they, you know, kind of build on each other. Yeah, I'll leave it at that, you guys. The other thing Taylor and I have been watching has been BoJack. So BoJack Horseman Season 4 has, I think, has now come out a couple weeks now. It's been, like, Season 4 has been out for a couple weeks now. And, um, we, that's another one. Okay, Manhunt and Unibomber was really good. But that's one where you, I, like, I don't know how you deal with tense stuff. But I used to be okay with it, like, Criminal Minds and, you know, CSI, that's all hunky-dory. I don't know. It was just easy for me to binge-watch that stuff. But, okay, let's talk about binge-watching Manhunt. Because I could not watch more than two episodes at a time. I think one time I watched three episodes, but that was because one episode was all about Ted, and you learned a little bit about his background, which is still really intense, but it was, like, less on the, oh my god, like, just catch him already, and more on the, like, wow, this is how you got super screwed up, and, like, I kind of get it, but, like, I feel bad for you, but also you killed a bunch of people and sent bombs to their houses. So. It kind of evened out. Like, I didn't feel bad for him at the end. Um... Yeah, uh, it was really hard binge-watching that show, but, uh... Bojack, that's one where you, like, seriously, I can't really decide whether or not it's better just to get it all over with in one shot, because then you have all emotions, or if it's better for you to, like, take your time and slowly get it out of your system, be but then you're living with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, if you're not familiar with Bojack, uh... Bojack Horseman is a animated TV show on uh, Netflix, and it stars Will Arnett as Bojack Horseman. He's like this, like, sitcom actor who basically, you know, rides his fame, and he wants to be more famous, but basically, you're kind of rooting for him, but he self-sabotages everything he touches, you know, where it's like, 
oh, it's so hard to root for you because you're also kind of a bad person. And, like, I want good things to happen to you because you're the main character. And I feel like, you know, I should want that. But it's also, like, God, Bojack, like, why can't you just be a normal person and enjoy things as they come? Because basically, like, the last season, he ends up, um... The last time you see him, he, like, almost tries to kill himself, and you're like, what is going on? And the first episode, we've only seen the first two episodes, because, you know, that's as much as we can bear, but it's like the first two episodes have been, like, super intense. I don't know. I don't know. Um... Let me know what you guys have been watching. So let me know if you've seen Manhunt the Unabomber. I'm going to finish this up. It's... I knotted it, apparently. So I'm going to try and unknot it. But yeah. This is actually one of the few times that I've actually frogged something. Because I don't frog things too often. Um, I usually just, like... If it's fine, I live with it. You know? But I just need the yarn. You guys, I just need the yarn. So... Let me know what you think um, of this video. Let me know how often you frog something. And let me know what you guys have been watching. Thanks for watching this, you guys. Bye!